Hey guys, it's Mike Two from Orchard Trailers again. Today, we're gonna do a walkthrough on a 2020 Puma 31 FKRK front kitchen rear king. It's a big unit, it's really awesome. It's one of my favorite from Puma, and I'm gonna show you how things work, and I'm gonna to try to give you all the help I can to get used to using this thing. All right, so starting out here in the kitchen. Over in the corner, we've got some nice storage, a couple cabinets over there. We've got a lot of drawers, a lot of cabinets underneath. This thing has huge storage space. It's again, one of the reasons why it's one of my favorites. Uh, shelf up top here, little touch button underneath the shelf. We have a nice big front window. Wonderful option to have in these campers. It doesn't open, but it does have a nice view out of the front of the camper. And this shade is custom built for this window. I've got an outlet on each side of this camper and of that window but a nice big pot filler here so the sprayer pulls out there is a sprayer knob on the side and of course it has our feature here we pull it out front or back for hot or cold and then one thing i love about pomo what they've done is they've given us a full stainless sink with no divider so one big open sink not a lot of people are doing it not in the brands we carry anyway this is really cool but the coolest thing is these little silly roll-up mats. So each side of the sink has one of these. Shouldn't say each side, the whole sink. There's two of these. All right, this rolls up for storage. I'll just roll right up out of your way, just like that. You can use one for a drying rack. You can use them both if you want to do prep space. Whatever you want to do with them, they're really cool. Moving on the other side, we've got another cabinet over here for storage. And in between that cabinet and the microwave is a switch for the light up top here. All right, the blind over here on this wall, this is a traditional mini blind. Reason being, we don't want pleated shades near a stove or near water. So we're gonna have that one tucked out of the way. It is tabbed down so it won't swing when you're traveling. So at the edge of the curtain, there's a little tab. That little clip goes right into it and that keeps that from swinging when you're going down the road. Microwave. Again, nothing too fancy. There is a glass dish in here. Be careful of that when traveling. It does bounce and sometimes they'll break. And then of course there's a couple presets on there, but nothing real fancy about this microwave at all. Below that, we're gonna have your range hood. So your range hood is gonna have a light and a fan. All right, and I'll show you where that fan vents outside as we get farther along in this video. Moving down to the stove, we've got a really nice backsplash back here. We have a little block back here with some slits in it. It's actually four kitchen knives, which again, one of my favorite silly little features in here. You don't want to have that big knife block sitting on your counter taking up a lot of space. That's going to have, it's going to have great storage basically. And you don't have to use that counter space for a knife block. You can use it for whatever else you want to use it for. When you're ready to use the stove, the glass top has, it has stoppers on the side of it to keep it from bouncing. So it'll be a little tight going in and out. And it'll be tight pushing down in for store for travel. So you wanna make sure it doesn't bounce. You can use it for prep space while you're not using the stove. When you're ready to use the stove, just pick it up, fold it back, put it back here. For our stove, we have a three burner stove, obviously with an oven. All right, we have an igniter switch here. And then we're just gonna turn each burner to whatever temperature you want like that and that'll light up all right for the oven the oven has an igniter in it now what I always tell people is open this oven door for about a 45 degree angle in the reflection you can see underneath you don't have to hang upside down anymore uh, we're gonna turn this on to pilot there's a little flame icon here hold it in click this until that lights when it lights keep holding this button in for about five to 10 seconds so it can warm up the thermocoupler and it can light up. Then you can turn it on and it will light up the oven and you have degrees marked on here. There's also a light for this stove. A little bit of ambiance for at night. Put this back down here. Down below the stove, there is a nice door for storage. And then on the wall, between the stove and microwave, there's a switch. It says refrigerator. This is for this new fridge. So the new fridge is a 12 volt fridge. It's got a 12 volt compressor. 
So that's going to allow you to use this thing in a lot of different ways than previous refrigerators. So like a gas and electric, you have to have electric or you have to have your propane on. This thing will run right off of your batteries. So going down the highway, you can leave that on. It's gonna power off your batteries and run on 12 volt power. All right, so the fridge has a travel latch. This goes out here to keep those doors from flying open on you while you're traveling. And this thing is massive. So nice and big here. Got temperature control up top. Temperature control for the fridge down here. Just set that to your temperature. And again, when you flip this switch on, that'll kick on and it'll fire up and start running your fridge. You'll see the light come on and then you can adjust your temperature control here. Below the fridge, you're gonna have two doors. This is storage underneath here. Moving down, we're gonna have a nice big pantry. So this pantry has a light inside, has some nice shelves. It also has your cooktop out here. So that burner outside in your kitchen is an induction burner. You need this base to put under your pan for whatever you're using on there or it won't work. Farther down, we've got our TV. This TV is on an arm and it will move around. It will also come off the wall. So this will pick up and it comes right off the wall. It's not always as easy as I'm making it look. And that goes right back on. Behind there, up top, you can't really see it. I'm gonna walk you through it. On the left side, there is a pre-wire for a king jack. So what that means is there's already a plug back there in the back. If you buy the King Jack antenna, you have two choices. You can have a Wi-Fi booster or you can get LTE capability and have a hotspot here. Uh, next to that, where the TV is plugged into cable, it says TV and also says satellite. Satellite's gonna be in case you ever do get satellite, you can plug into there. Just below that, the coax comes in from the antenna, comes up to the TV. Next to that coax, there's a little black switch. There's a green light above that little black switch. What that green light says is that's an antenna booster. So that's going to boost the signal from the antenna, get you some nice clear HD channels if you have some in range. If you click that off, it's going to switch over to cable or whatever else you're trying to use there. And then there's an extra outlet behind the TV back there for plugging something else in if you need to. It also has a grab on it. So when you push this in, it's going to a good push and it locks into place so it won't bounce around during travel. Your radio, this is an IRV radio. When you, if you want to hook up to Bluetooth, you're going to want to turn it on. You're going to go into your phone under Bluetooth and you're going to want to hit uh, IRV. Usually it's a 66 or 63, maybe a 32 or 33. That'll be your radio. You can connect your Bluetooth, your iPhone, your Android. If you've got Amazon Music or Spotify or Amazon Prime or whatever you may have streaming. Uh, there's some cool features. So we're going to have Bluetooth on here. The clock, you just hold the clock button in and then you're going to turn with the dial. Click that dial in when you're ready to go to minutes, and then hit clock again when you're done. Speakers on one and two. One is inside, two is outside. And of course we have presets here. Presets work just like your car. They're gonna go push the button, hold it for a minute, and that's gonna give you your preset for that channel. You gotta fast forward, rewind, skip chapters, pause and play. This is a CD and DVD player. It is not a Blu-ray player. And then of course we've got our IR here, which means we have a remote that comes with this that all these things I'm telling you are on. There's a couple plugins down bottom here. So auxiliary is gonna be for an older iPod that doesn't have Bluetooth connectivity. Five volt charge for your phone, USB. And then there's an HDMI here if you wanna put a Blu-ray player in or if you wanna put a gaming console or something like that. All right, got some nice cubbies down below. And then we've got our fireplace. So our fireplace down here has a couple buttons hidden in this little hole here. So over here on the far right, we're gonna turn this thing on. Next one's gonna be your flame color. Next to that is gonna be another flame color, the rocks in the front. Beyond that, it's gonna be your temperature, so your fan speed. So this just turned on, it's blowing out warm air here, that's low. Hit it again, that's gonna be high. And then our last one, you'll see the numbers show up here. So this is a time off setting. So this will go up to nine hours and that will, that will let this thing turn off at night. So if you wanna to go to bed with it on, 
leave it on for two or three hours, it'll automatically shut itself down when it's done. All right, over on this side, we've got our kitchen table. Our chairs are strapped for travel mode. So basically you wanna make sure they're not flying around in here and damaging anything. So you wanna strap them down, strap them together and strap them to the floor. This table is hard mounted and screwed down to the floor. Our light here has an on and off switch. The other lights have a switch on the wall. I'll get to in just a second. These are roller shades. So these roller shades, I'm just gonna hold them and they'll go all the way up. And then moving down here, we have two recliners. Now these are really nice Thomas Payne recliners. They actually will lay out nice and flat. Above that, you have your cabinets. So your cabinets just open up. These go all the way through and then down to the end. On this wall, we have a switch to turn these two lights off down here. And then we have two USBs for charging. So this is a fold out couch. I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm going to take our pillows, move them out of the way. I'm going to grab here in the middle, pick up. As we're coming up, we want to put these legs down, just like this. In the back, there is storage underneath here. And then this just comes down. And that makes your bed. Let's put it up. I'm just going to pick this back up. this back in, down, place our pillows back, and we're done. By the door is our main control panel. So up here you're going to have buttons to push. We just push these buttons and it's going to tell you how your tanks are and how your battery is. So as you push through here, you'll see the reading. They will go up. In the case of the battery, it will go down as it loses charge. So right here, you have a water pump. You hear that come on. This is only if you are dry camping and you have to bring your water with you. You'll need pressure up to the sink and shower. Don't leave that running if you don't have water in the tank. You will burn it up. Below that, it's going to be your water heater and gas. So we're going to turn that on. This little red light means there's no gas. Well, I don't have bottles in this unit right now. When this is full of, of gas, you're gonna wanna see that come on for a minute, then it'll go right off once it fires up. All right, below that, we have our awning light, we have lights outside, and then over here, we have the interior lights. So now everything that's on in here is gonna be on a switch or a touch button. And then when I flip that back on, our main lights come on. Next to that, we're gonna have our porch light. It's gonna be our amber light outside. We're gonna have our awning extend and retract. Slide one, slide two. So living room, bedroom. In the hallway next to the bathroom is your Coleman Mach thermostat. With this thermostat, we have cool, which is your air conditioner. We'll adjust this to our temperature that we want. We have fan. That's gonna run off of these over here. So fan low and high on auto will shut off at your desired temperature. On low and high will not shut off until you shut it off. The middle switch is gonna be on and then the switch all the way to the right is gonna be heat. The heat in this thing is propane only. You have to have propane. You have to have the bottles open for this to run. Just flip that on and again, set your temperature. In the bathroom, we have a medicine cabinet. Below your medicine cabinet, we have a GFI outlet. This one's really important. If you plug this thing into power and you should have outlets and you don't, check the reset on that. That might be the problem. All right, moving down, we've got your sink. We've got your medicine cabinet, your storage down below. We've got your shower. So the shower is glass. In the middle, you'll see these two little handles here. That's how you open it. There's a magnet holding it together that will um, help it stay shut going down the road, as will this rubber piece here. So this is the travel lock. It so basically just hooks around. Uh, if somebody's acting up, you can lock them in there. Don't tell them I said that. All right, moving down. Bottom, there is an access panel here if you ever need to get into the plumbing for the shower. 
Uh, backing up a little bit, we have our toilet over here with a foot flush. All right, and then as we come in to the bathroom, we have a linen closet here with a lot of storage. Nice tall linen closet. All right, here in the bedroom, we're gonna have a lot of storage. So we have cabinets above the bed. We have some nice corner shelves in there. We have that nice big window in the back behind the bed. Nice big bedroom. And then of course we've got huge storage under here. You're gonna see a couple different cranks under here. One's gonna be for those manual stabilizers outside. I'll tell you this now and I'll probably tell you again when I get outside. Please don't pick up the trailer with those. They're not strong jacks. They will bend and break. All right, just snug them down a little bit. They're basically to keep the shake down. And trust me, this thing has roller shades. If you don't have the jacks down, so when this thing is rolling, you're gonna hear them clanking on the window. So definitely put those down just enough to keep it from shaking. Before I started making this video, all I could hear when I was walking around here was clank, clank, clank from those things. When I put the stabilizers down, I haven't heard it once, have you? All right, so and there should be another one for your power tongue jack under there. That's gonna go into the power tongue jacking and get you home should your jack ever fail on you. Over on each side of the bed, we have outlets. And over here, I have lots of cabinet space. This is all hanging space through here. And all these doors, nice and here. Uh, down here, I have a cold air return and I have your converter box. And I'll bring the camera a little bit closer to that converter box so you can see it in a minute. Up above, we have a cap. Please be careful with this cap. It doesn't have a max air cover over it. It will let water in here if you forget to leave it open. So please make sure you close that if you're not in the camper and you think there might be rain. In the back here, we have a couple USBs. We have a nice big closet here with a light. Over by the door, you've got a really nice dresser here with three drawers. We also have a TV backer built in the wall here with the antenna carry over in power. You can put an arm right up there, put your TV on either flat mount or you can articulate. All right, just below the back wall here, the wardrobe storage, you're gonna have your converter box. So this is going to open and you're gonna have all of your fuses and breakers in here. So as you can see, your big main is right here, your 50, it's two switches. Everything is labeled as we go across. And then we have fuses up top. So our fuses are standard automotive style fuses. You can get them wherever you get your automotive fuses from. They all have a light on the board next to them that is red. So if one of those fuses should go out, that light's gonna light up for you and let you know it needs to be replaced. Also, when you close this door, you can see that through here if that red light comes on. And the noise you hear right now is gonna be the fans running in here to keep this cool. So when you wanna make a rain dump with the awning, then I'll pull this awning arm down, lock this into place, and that'll hold it and let the rain run off one side or the other. It's a little windy today, so I don't wanna leave it out for too long. Uh, it's another good point. Don't leave your awning out on a really windy day. It will rip the awning right off this camper. Moving past that, before you let it go, hang on to it. Loosen this up, let it go. There's a gas shock that'll pull it up quickly. And then you're gonna wanna make sure that if you dump it down one end, just watch the door. The door will start to rub on the awning when you open and close it. So just keep that in mind for when you've got this pitch down to run the rain off. Up here we have our range hood vent. Those two little clips pop open and that vents outside. Out front we have your hot water heater. I'm gonna take this down. Up top you have your blow off valve. You have your reset buttons. And then under here is the important part. Right back here underneath that little piece of paper is going to be an on off switch. So that you're gonna to need to use to turn this on to operate it. And especially if you want it on electric. Over here, this little nut is your anode rod. That sacrifices itself to keep your tank from being eaten apart. And you will need to take that out, say once a year and change it out. Also, when you're ready to dump your tank, you drain your tank with that coming out. 
Next up is going to be your fresh water fill. If you have to bring water with you to the campsite, this is going to be where you fill your tank up. Down underneath the camper, there is a little valve to dump that tank out. Moving down the skirting, there's a little hole here. One of those hand cranks underneath the bed will go in here and crank your slide in. So it always works for the opposite side of the camper. It, you can wind that crank back in if the motor ever stops and it won't work. That'll get you out of a jam. All right, up ahead of that is gonna be your power outlet out here. If you do bring the TV out, we have your outside kitchen. Again, that's an induction burner. It's what we call a micro kitchen. We have our burner over here. We have our sprayer. And then we have a connection here for that hose. Up here we have a fridge. Now this fridge is 110 only. It will not work with gas or electric. It has to be plugged into 110. Moving back, you have your stairs. Stairs fold up into the camper. I'm going to give you a demonstration of that right now. Now for the stairs, the door has to be all the way open so you don't hit on the screen. You're going to pick them right up. They're going to go up in the door and this yellow latch is going to hold it from coming out. Putting them down. You have a pin over here that will extend or retract the legs to match your campsite height. Let's go down like that. Past the door is going to be an outlet, cable carryover, and your mount for the TV to come outside. Moving back, we have your stairs. These stairs for the bedroom are a little bit different. They fold out and down. There's your stairs. Now you're going to do the same going back in, pull up, and in. Just like that. At the back of the camper there's going to be a sign for LP Quick Connect. That's going to be right here underneath. You can just plug right in for a gas grill if you have one. This will run right off of your bottles. And while we're here, these are the jacks. These are manual stabilizer jacks. They're just meant for stabilization. Please don't pick the trailer up with them. You do have a hand crank for that in the compartment under the bed. But I would also recommend a three quarter inch socket and a cordless drill. At the back of the camper on the opposite side is the door to get into the storage under the bed. Underneath we have your black and gray dumps. Black in the front, gray in the back. On the side a little farther up we have an outdoor shower. We have your city water for campground supplied water. And then we have our black tank flush for cleaning out that black tank. Moving up front here we have your galley tank. Because this thing is so big, bathroom and kitchen are so far apart, we have a separate galley tank here for the gray water from the sink. Up front, you will have a battery when this thing's ready to go home. You're gonna have two 30 pound propane tanks. You've got a power tongue jack here. And again, that little hole is right here on top. You pull this out and put that hand crank in there and bring this jack up. And of course that has a light and an extend and retract.